the mayor of a village that was emptied of its residents following the accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is ready to start again. Yuko Endo is the leader of Kawauchi, which is located in the evacuation zone around the damaged facility. He's telling his citizens to get ready to come home. Japan's central government lifted its entry ban restrictions on three municipalities within the 20-kilometer evacuation zone effective this month. Part of Kawauchi village is outside the no-go area. Still, almost all of its approximately 3,000 residents fled after the Fukushima accident. About 2,700 or 90% haven't returned. They're worried about radiation contamination and about getting work. Mayor Endo and other people who work for Kawauchi are trying to show they're ready to welcome citizens back. They held a ceremony Monday in the old village office. The mayor formally appointed employees to their new positions. The village government has had to operate outside the evacuation zone until recently. Everything we do is for our citizens. We can move forward step by step to rebuild our village so that it returns to what it was. Mayor Endo plans to build homes in parts of Kawauchi that have, made, that have been determined safe. The village is pressing ahead with the contamination work and job creation to be ready for the residents' return. Japan's Reconstruction Minister Tatsuo Hirano has hinted that some areas near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant may have to be declared off-limits indefinitely. It's the first time a government official has raised the possibility that some evacuees will not be going home. Hirano met the governor of Fukushima Prefecture and the mayor of Futaba Town near the plant. The minister suggested that some areas may remain unsafe for years to come. He noted the large amount of highly radioactive wastewater stored at the nuclear complex. The water has accumulated from the process of cooling the reactors. The government has promised to decontaminate all affected areas so people can return to their homes in stages. Children around Japan have started to return to school at the start of the new year. This stands true for students in the country's disaster-stricken northeast. The kids have been reuniting with old friends, but for some, they're in new places. Three public schools in Naraha Town in Fukushima Prefecture held a joint opening ceremony at a leased facility in the neighboring city of Iwaki. I will always appreciate the support we received and will approach the future with a positive attitude. The three schools are based in the no-go zone around the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They were closed after the disaster. The students spent the rest of the year studying near where they had evacuated, but the kids are now back together.
People forced to evacuate after the accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are now able to enter part of the government-designated no-go zone. Japan's central government lifted its entry restrictions within the 20-kilometer evacuation zone for Kawauchi Village and Tamura City on April 1st. And on Monday at midnight, the ban on Minamisoma City was lifted. We are determined to work together for the citizens to get back to their own places and for the safety and security of the community. A ceremony was held just before midnight for the deployment of police and watch volunteers who will patrol communities where free access is now permitted. When midnight came, a police checkpoint about 20 kilometers from the Daiichi plant was removed. Instead, a new checkpoint was set up about 20, 10 kilometers from the plant where police were seen checking vehicles. The government is working to set up three new evacuation areas for 11 municipalities according to radiation levels. The municipalities were or are under evacuation orders or advisories. Minamisoma is the first tsunami hit coastal municipality to have the evacuation order lifted. Residents of the city must now try to rebuild lives that were ravaged by the tsunami and the nuclear accident. People forced to evacuate after the Fukushima Daiichi accident can now visit part of the no-go zone but face challenges as they try to resume life in their hometowns. Japan's central government lifted entry restrictions for the 20-kilometer evacuation zone covering Kawauchi Village and Tamura City this month. The government added Minamisoma City to the list Monday morning. Residents can visit most of the city, but not high radiation areas deemed unsafe for extended periods of time. Overnight stays are not yet allowed. Resident Yoshikazu Takeuchi went to his home with his wife and mother. After the evacuation, Takeuchi ran his construction material store at a different location in the city. He says he hopes to reopen the store at its original location now that the entry ban has been lifted. Reconstruction has finally started. I hope we can work together so that people can return to the city and live there again. Much more work has to be done around the damaged nuclear power plant before residents can return to the city to live. Full-fledged efforts to clean up debris, decontaminate and restore infrastructure have yet to begin. We will tell the central government that it's responsible for the lack of infrastructure and for providing compensation for damages from the nuclear accident. Japan's population is shrinking faster than ever. New government figures show it declined by more than a quarter of a million people in 2011. The Internal Affairs Ministry says Japan's population as of last October 1st was almost 127.8 million. That's a drop of 259,000 or 0.2 percent from the previous year. Both the figure and the rate of decline represent the largest ever drop since comparable data became available in 1950. Japan's Agriculture Ministry says only a third of farmland ruined by last year's disaster is ready for reuse. More than 24,000 hectares of farmland in 12 prefectures suffered cracks from the earthquake or were ruined by salt from the tsunami of March 11th last year. The Agriculture Ministry says that exactly one year after the disaster, just over 8,000 hectares, or about 33 percent, had been cleared for cultivation. In Fukushima, only 9 percent of damaged farmland has been restored due to the effects of the nuclear disaster. The Ministry says the removal of salt and sludge in some areas is taking time, while in others, no decision has been made on whether to repair farms at all. The ministry hopes to restore 90 percent of all affected farmland by the spring of 2014. Japan's industry minister has shown residents an estimate of radiation levels around the Fukushima Daiichi plant in the coming decades. Yukio Edano says some areas will remain too radioactive for locals to return even 10 years from now. It now showed the forecast to representatives of towns near the plant. Government officials came up with their prediction of declining atmospheric radiation based on monitoring carried out last November by aircraft. 
They did not take into account the effect of decontamination. The estimate predicts that five years from now, radiation levels will remain more than 100 millisieverts per year in some parts of towns around Fukushima Daiichi. Levels drop after 10 years, but they remain higher than 20 millisieverts in parts of those towns and some neighboring towns. The government should be prepared to talk to residents about making a decision to give up on returning home. Hosono said government officials will consult local administrations on how to proceed with decontamination because some residents insist on returning. Japanese government officials have taken a look at living conditions for survivors of the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. They found that over the past year, more than 1,600 of those people died, many of them elderly. Reconstruction agency officials found the health of many survivors deteriorated in stressful living conditions. Many lost their homes and were living in makeshift housing. The deaths occurred in 10 prefectures. As of the end of March, the highest number of deaths occurred in Fukushima with more than 760. Miyagi Prefecture had the second highest number, followed by Iwate. Agency officials say some people may have died because they were unable to go to hospital. Researchers will continue with their work in an effort to learn why and when the victims died. Nearly 16,000 people died directly because of the earthquake and tsunami.